year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions, and all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them, and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, Corpus Christi. Good morning. And today we celebrate the uh, feast day of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And if there's anything I want you to remember, it's simply this. A holy family is not a perfect family. A holy family is not a perfect family. And we're told that right out of the gate. Our gospel reading today comes to us from Luke. And Luke tells us a story about Jesus getting lost. In other words, his parents don't know where he's at. And what is one of our greatest fears? One of our greatest fears is losing uh, our child. You know? For instance, if you go shopping and you're in the supermarket and you're walking down the aisle and you turn your, your head and within a couple of seconds you turn back and your child is gone, all of a sudden you're into the panic mode. Huh? And even as an adult, whenever I visit my parents, I'm to text them before I go, and I'm to text them when I return. And they have a certain idea in, my mind, in their minds about when I'll be arriving home. And so they start, they start texting if I haven't responded within a certain you know, time frame. So you see, even as you get older, parents are always parents, okay? So if you think one day you're going to get out from under the authority of your parents, I got news for you, okay? <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, when we miss, uh, when we lose a child, oftentimes it's, it's, it's very brief. Uh, but Joseph and Mary, they, they just think that Jesus is somehow in this caravan. So they don't miss Jesus for a couple hours or for an afternoon. They've lost him for three days. What kind of parenting is that? <laughs> and so I think what Luke is saying to us is that a holy family is not a perfect family. That Jesus comes from a family too, like all of us. And uh, they have their misunderstanding. They have their miscommunication. They had, and they made mistakes, but yet they were a holy family. And even in our families, uh, there's misunderstandings, miscommunications, uh, mistakes. Uh, every family experiences that. But yet, here you are on Sunday as a family. And we are told in our gospel reading today that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And you come up to Aliso, to our Jerusalem, to celebrate Mass on Sunday as a family, as a holy family, not a perfect family. And as a pastor, okay, I 
know that sometimes among staff and, uh, uh, and parishioners and finance council and pastoral council, sometimes there's miscommunication, there's misunderstandings, there are mistakes, we're not always on the same page, and yet we love each other, we care for each other, we are holy, and we are true. And, uh, and we extend the sign of peace, meaning, you know, we're in this together, and we learn to be patient together, we learn to be forgiving together, we learn to be uh, generous together, uh, we learn to pray together, and we're not perfect. And thank God we're not perfect. So. Uh, one of the things, uh, uh, this is where my mind went when I was taking a look at our gospel reading today. I was kind of thinking, how did Mary respond? How did Mary respond? So I went immediately to my mother. Okay. Now, there are some blessings to being number two. Because my older brother uh, was the template. Okay. So I could observe my older brother. You know, what I could get away with, what I couldn't get away with. And, of course, my older brother being an older brother, one whom I definitely look up to and love, uh, and whose name is my confirmation name, uh, St. Lawrence. So Larry would always push the limit. He would push the envelope. And I would just watch, okay? So uh, when he's in high school, you know, he's given a curfew. Well, did he always come home right on time? No. That was the day before social media. Uh, it wasn't easy to get to a phone. And I think Larry was just pushing the envelope. That's what he was doing. So come, you know, five minutes to 10, mom all of a sudden is pacing, okay? It's not 10 o'clock yet, but she's got her eye on the clock. And now it's 10 o'clock and there's no Larry. So in her mind, all the worst case scenarios that could possibly happen, happen, okay? In her mind, in her imagination, and she's panicking, okay? And, uh, and she's angry, and, but she's also scared, and she's terrified. And I kind of think in some ways, Mary went through that same experience. She's a mom, curse our boy, and he's a preteen, who probably thinks, you know, that he's good on his own. He stayed behind in the temple. So, but as soon as Larry arrived, usually about 20 minutes late, I could hear, you know, the gate open, he's coming through the entryway, and mom would just be, thank God he's okay. But she couldn't let him know that. So as soon as he walked in the house, he got it. And of course, being the second oldest, I would just kind of stand back and gloat. <laughs> right, let him have it, let him have it. Uh, this is wonderful, I love it. And, uh, and yet, there we were on Sunday as a holy family. I'm on my father's left, Larry is on my father's right, okay? And uh, we dare not sit together. But we were always kind of like duking it out, going elbows, this is my side of the room, Stay off to my side, don't get into my stuff, so on and so forth. And so, as I mentioned, uh, if you were here for Christmas, uh, the one thing uh, that Jesus being born in a manger says to us is that Jesus meets us in the mangers of life, not in the mansions of life. Jesus meets us in the messiness of family life. He meets us in the misunderstandings, the miscommunications, the mistakes. And we know that we're a holy family when we come together and worship our God. And it is in the family that we learn to forgive, we learn to be patient, we learn to share, we learn to be kind, we learn to comfort, uh, and we learn to encourage. These things are done in the family. Family is a wonderful classroom in preparation for life. And I come from a position that I always that I believe that all of us here, we are people of goodwill, and that we all are doing the best that we can by the light we have to see by. We're all doing the best we can by the light that we have to see by. So there's a couple of things from our readings today. 
You know, I don't know if this is the hardest thing that a parent has to, ex or that a parent experiences, but if I'm wrong, I'm not far from uh, the truth. And that is this, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety, and he said to them, why were you looking for me? Now that sounds like a 12 year old. <laughs> Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And I can just, I can just see Mary and Joseph going, oh, you're right, you're right. You belong to God, you don't belong to us. You belong to the Father, you don't belong to us. You are a wonderful gift, and we will do everything we can to share with you our faith, we will share with you our life, we will give you our life, but you're right, you don't belong to us. And we don't belong to one another, we belong to God. Our children belong to God, our grandchildren belong to God. Our spouses belong to And in the meantime, we care for one another, we love one another, we worship together, we support, we encourage, but we all belong to God. So let me give you an example, a story. So Amy, Amy is my niece, okay? And Amy is a senior this year, Harvard. She's gonna graduate from Harvard. We're Cal State Fullerton and Long Beach people. Okay? <laughs> so we have a member from our family that's in Harvard. She's going to graduate from Harvard. Woo! So anyway, uh, so last week at, when our family gathered uh, to celebrate Christmas before Christmas, I go, so Amy, what are you, what are you going to do? And she says, well, I'm looking into the Peace Corps for two years. I go, awesome, that's wonderful. And where do you want to go? Oh, Central or South America, okay? So then, a little bit later on, my mom comes up to me and she says, you know, your sister Jill, Amy's mother, and your brother-in-law, Robert, my favorite brother-in-law, my only brother-in-law, <laughs> are having a real difficult time with it because they have four children and Amy's the only daughter. And they don't want their daughter going down to Central and South America. But I think they realize that, you know, she's gonna make, she's an adult. <clears throat> and she has to follow her heart. She has to listen to the still, small voice. She has to listen to, to her heart, to her conscience. And that's a real hard thing for them. And it would be a hard thing for me if I were a parent or a family. But in a sense, Amy belongs to and we all do. And so I think that's the hard part in our reading today is, is to possess lightly, to have a certain detachment uh, that we're here for one another and yet each one of us uh, belongs to God. And uh, to kind of bring that to conclusion is we are told in the beginning of our gospel reading today, each year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, they were a family deeply immersed in the rituals and traditions of their people. Okay. So, and so are you. You are here, immersed in the tradition of our faith. So, day after Christmas, I, I woke up, I didn't go home on Christmas, I don't go home on Christmas, I'm too tired not safe to drive. I drive in pairs. Uh, about five years ago, having to get pull off uh, Interstate 15 a couple of times just to walk around the car to wake up uh, in the midst of bumper to bumper traffic. I, when I got into home, I said to mom and dad, I'm not coming out <laughs> for another Christmas, okay? So uh, I'll be out there on New Year's. But anyway, so when I woke up on the 26th, I go, okay, what am I going to do? got a day off, and it was the first time that this occurred to me, and I said, well, you know what, I'm going to do it. I was baptized on December the 26th, 1954, and I was baptized at St. Peter and Paul in Wilmington, South Bay Area, so I go, I've never done this, so I drove out to Wilmington, okay, by San Diego. 
B-roll or K-roll and, uh, and Long Beach and decided just to, to walk in the church. Our family moved in 63. So I've been there maybe three to five times since 1963. So I go over to the font, and the font is where it was back in 1954, okay? And some of you who know uh, Father Del Hunte, it was his uncle, Monsignor Tom Doyle, who baptized me in 1954. So Dick Del Hunte was the pastor at, at uh, uh, St. Nicholas for 12, 13, 14, 15 years. So the only thing that made the baptistry a little bit different 64 years later is they had an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. But same stations of the cross, same stained glass windows. And you know, when you're six years old, the glass windows are everything. My imagination, I'd get lost in them. So they had the prodigal son and the good Samaritan and uh, the good shepherd. And I'm just walking around, taking pictures with my phone, sending them to my mother. Guess where I'm at? She come, uh, she respond and say, oh, fond memories, and so on and so forth. And I walk to the front office and had to be let in because of the neighborhood. But they have this speaker system. They go, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> now, actually, they didn't say that. They said, can we help you? And I said, well, I'd like to leave a donation. So I wrote out a check for $64. $64 a dollar per year of life. And, uh, but it was just really a day of, of, of thanksgiving, of gratitude, of appreciation. But I really thought about this. On the day that I was baptized, at 2 p.m., Sunday, December the 26th, 1954, I'm not sure what my parents were thinking, I'm not sure what they were feeling, but I know what the action of baptism it meant, thank you for the gift of our son. And we will do everything we can to be role models. We will do everything in our power to create a holy family. Our son belongs to you. And we give you, we surrender to you, our son. And he's with us for a while, but he belongs to you. And I think to me, that's what back part of what baptism means, and it also is part of what today means, is, is that Mary and Joseph realizing that Jesus belongs to God, and all of us, we all belong to God. We are his. And so these are just some very uh, thoughts that, that uh, came to me and, uh, and that I share with you today. And um, so we thank God for the gift of our families. And as I'll, I'll conclude the way I began, just remember, a holy family is not a perfect family. And neither was the quote unquote holy family. But they loved and cared and supported for each other. Uh, and, uh, and we are to do the same. So let us now stand and profess our faith. Together we say, I...